about this for the entire time that you two have been together. And now you just split. And I've seen you fighting for that United States title, and you're talented, but you need somebody to steer you in the right direction. And they could have done this, like, mentorship type thing instead. And mm -hmm. now it's just the two of them being American Alpha 2.0, and they switched them to be heels and the Usos to be baby faces. So now it's sort of like, Gable and Benjamin are the nice guys that became the bad guys, and the Usos are the assholes who are supposed to be cheered. And there's no real, like, energy behind it, I think. The matches are fine. Like, I mean, they're all talented. They're all going to do a good enough job. But I, the feud is just blah, you know? This is how I feel. Yeah, I agree 100% because there's no reason. But Jason Jordan didn't need to be Kurt Angle's son, but that's we'll get into that, I guess, for the raw thing. And the pairing of Benjamin Gable is almost extremely racist. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, Gable, here's the other black guy that was associated with Kurt Angle. He can team with you. Like, there's no reason for any of it. They stole the Steiner Brothers to the which I, I don't like, but... I want Usos to retain here because they're Usos, uh, Gable and Benjamin can move on to being on all the SmackDown kickoff pay-per-views and one-on-ones, and yeah, let's just get a real tag team feud going on the main roster again. Like, I, I cannot stand this tag team scene right now. Uh, I'm going to try to change Usos, but Gable Benjamin's win. I think he needs something to freshen up the tag team division, and even though I agree that maybe Gable and Benjamin aren't ready for the long term, I think you need to move away from the perennial Usos and New Day trading open belts and move on to some fresh blood in the tag team division. Good job, I think Cal. With Good the little they did recently, Gable Benjamin winning the title, but not actually winning the title, I think that was to set up them to win it here. I think it's where Apple's kind of suits him. He's right, and he's even more right. That would be even more right now. Quite often in these ones. In these sort of scenarios where you just have one, like, I guess, pinfall that's disputed, especially due to the fact that their previous title match was had a disputed video replay finish, so. There's going to be some sort of shenanigans going on here, and I think it will end up with Gable and Benjamin winning the titles. See, I know some people think that Jey Uso's arrest might lead to a title change, and I actually kind of think that... Surely WWE wouldn't be paying enough to do something like that. <laughs> I think that um, the Enzo situation yeah, they completely has taken away the potential of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of think that maybe that actually helps a little bit. Better. And um, the Usos are the bigger tag team. We're at WrestleMania season. There's a chance we can get title changes, of course, because we've had title changes happen at Fastlane and Elimination Chamber, and two weeks leading up to WrestleMania in the past and stuff like that. So there's certainly no, like, rule or something that says, like, the titles that happen at the Royal Rumble, those are the ones we're going to get WrestleMania. Because we can get Gable and Benjamin winning the titles here, and they can drop to the Bludgeon Brothers in two weeks, you know? There's, there's ways around it. But I think that the users are keeping it. I think that they are the bigger tag team, and come WrestleMania, they're going to be fighting for the tag titles no matter what. So you might as well just keep it on them, you know? The two out of three falls, I think that gives them an opportunity for Gable and Benjamin to win another fall, and the Usos get, like, a super kick uh, pin and a splash pin or something like that. That's not something that is, like, the most secure guarantee. Because I do think if any title is going to change hands, this stands a better chance than almost any other one. Two of them are definite, I think. And the other two are, are kind of like, eh, maybe. But um, I do lean more towards the Usos. And I can see this being a fun match. It's two out of three falls. We know that they're talented. It could be a lot of fun. But I don't think anybody's going to care about it whatsoever at the end of it. And by the time that half the pay-per-view is done, people might even forget that it happened, you know? Absolutely. Which is yes. kind of a shame. But they turned the Usos face, I think, specifically to have them feud with the Bludgeon Brothers. So I don't see them losing here unless they want to go to fast lane with, like, a tag team ladder match and then focus all your attention on Mania being the Usos versus the Bludgeon Brothers. I think it's too much to forget the whole brother brother thing where they could have like the bludgeon brothers versus the actual brothers and remind me again Tony who's Chad Gable's partner oh I was gonna try to make a joke there about some kind of brother thing and I'm like oh that would come out wrong <laughs> 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 well you gotta say it the right way if you're gonna say it you can never call him Sean Benjamin anymore at this point yeah, especially when you're the Usos it's Sean Benjamin <laughs> uh, but yeah I'm going to Usos um, Calum you're going to title change yeah. yeah I got the Usos so we're 2-1 on that one let's see uh, if we get any that we're 3-0 or something like that Possibly with this next one, I don't know. Uh, the Raw Tag Team Championship match. The current title holders are Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan for some fucking reason. And they're fighting the bar for the... Uh, God knows how many fucking times. I'm sick and tired of seeing this. The bar. How many Rollins, Cesaro, Rollins, Sheamus, yes. Jordan, Sheamus, Jordan, Cesaro, Ambrose, Rollins against the bar. Uh, just, I, mean, I don't, I don't know how many like, times they did it, but I, I like, I like I mean, that, that in generally. But at the same time, I don't want Jordan and Rollins to win because I don't like this pairing. It feels like the bar been in every single Raw Tag Team Championship match in a year or so. Like... I'm not sure they push four tag teams, right now, if that. They're just that. constantly fighting for that title, those titles, and they're a fantastic they team. They never face each other, they never switch it up. But they need to be away from it now, like it's been far too long. Smackdown, Smackdown the matches are always good, raw. but there's only so long you can keep having the same good matches before it starts getting tighter. And Rollins and Jordan, I mean, I'm okay with the pairing because it's the guy who is the most popular by the audience and the guy who's absolutely hated. I know some people are against this idea of like, the odd couples being the tag team champions, but I think given the right huge or scenario it works, I mean, it feels quite clear to me that they're building towards Rollins as somebody who doesn't like my opinions. I think it's quite clear they're building towards Rollins as Jordan at WrestleMania, at least in my mind. I got it. Uh, I mean, okay. Last year, when they banned Rollins from the 2017 Rumble, I said, Rollins is going to win the 2018 Rumble. I said that on the day of the Rumble last year, and my god, am I clearly way off base. Uh, Rollins deserves so much more than this. The Shield reunion was nice. I was so into the One whole team with Ambrose now. thing. But as soon as Ambrose went down, they should have just went their separate ways. Like, there's no reason for Seth Rollins to be teamed with Jason Jordan here. There's no reason for Jason Jordan to be Kurt Angle's son. The bar needs to get away from the tag team scene and be the credible single stars that we know that they can be. This whole thing is a mess, so I'm going to give it to Cesaro and Sheamus just because I don't want Rollins and Jordan anywhere near each other for WrestleMania. And... Yeah, let's just hope that this time next year, Rollins is in a much better place. Here's Dang. something to ponder, and it's more fantasy book than anything. Jameson said, we know this. And the reason I, they keep him with Cesaro is first off because it kind of works. Mean, they're good tag team, they're better than I would have thought they would have meshed uh, together. And second, it's because they need to give him a little bit of time to, to rest and not wrestle singles matches as much uh, as he was doing before and all that. So you can't put the titles back on him. It's just, you can't do it.
I don't give a shit about this feud. I don't want to see the two of them fight each other. I don't want to see the two of them as tag team champions or fighting to try to get back the tag team titles. I really want to separate the two. I really want Jason Jordan to just be in the Under the Giant Memorial Royal and Chris giving, Rollins to just. It's giving know, attention to someone in the issue is we're running out of WrestleMania things for Rollins, so he's going to end up with Jordan. I think you guys are like decrying that as like a real downgrade for Rollins. Admittedly, compared to last year, it was one Triple H. It is a downgrade. But Jordan is like in terms of actual heels that get heat, is on the like upper echelon. He's right up there. Yeah. He's doing really well. People legitimately hate him. He wasn't even trying. That's the funny part. Yeah, I actually like Jordan a lot, and I really kind of. I mean, this is going to sound like sacrilege, but I actually kind of want to see Jason Jordan versus Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. I want to see that down the line. I want to see that down the line. I think, I think it's good for Rollins to be a feud with somebody who's actually hated. Because at the moment, I think people are quite apathetic towards Seth Rollins in general. They're just like, he's just there almost. He needs to be a feud with someone who's actually getting a reaction from people. A next reaction if they want to push him as like, a top star as a baby face. Well, here's where the fantasy booking thing comes in. This is something I would love to see them do. And I don't think it's going to happen, of course, because this is there's too many moving pieces to get this to happen. But just to put it out there for anybody that goes, well, you're going to book anything better? I think this is better. <laughs> Uh, Seamus needs time off. He really does. Uh, just, I, I like Seamus now. Like, I am not going to say that as a means of being like, I don't fucking like Seamus like I used to with uh, Del Rio and stuff. I want Seamus to stick around. I want him to rest up. And at this year's WrestleMania, I can't see any scenario where Seamus does something that's good enough. So give him time off. But you still need to have the bar. Sure this is how you get around it. Rollins and Jordan win this match at the Royal Rumble. And Seamus gets taken out. Just do. kind of one of those things. He's too injured. On, and Cesaro comes out. He goes, original. you know what? I, uh, I am such a supporter of Seamus and all that. He and I have been kicking Isn't some ass and stuff, but he's injured. So we need to set a new bar here. Sheamus Double turn with Cashisono and Velveteen Dream happened the night before. Now Monday Night Raw, Cashisono comes out. Everybody that's in the area knows the whole uh, history between those two. And we get the original Kings of Wrestling as another incarnation of the bar. And they take those tag titles away from Jordan and Rollins. Then you get Cesaro and Ono as the tag title champions. They can go into a match at WrestleMania with, like, the Revival or with the Good Brothers, you know, the Ballard Club. They can do some kind of triple threat or whatever, you know, you end up doing with that. And you get, like, this yeah, they, smart they uh, kind of, of glory tag team match. And Rollins and Jordan fight each other where they go and do they their own separate things. That's case, but they can't go in as tag champs. So they gotta lose at some point. You're gonna lose them at some point. They're gonna have to lose them to the Revival. We're the Ballard Club. We're this new incarnation of the bar. And I think that that could be fucking awesome. And yeah, it I makes me it. sad that it's not going to happen. <laughs> I think every single ring of other fans listening to scream themselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Like, that is what I want to see for the Raw Tag titles at WrestleMania. Kings so, of Wrestling. Now that I got everybody's hopes up, uh, the reality of the situation is either the bar's going to win and we're going to get Jordan and Rollins bitching at each other on Raw, or Jordan and Rollins are going to win and they're just going to be like, we need to fight somebody new and then the Revival will fucking lose them and stuff and whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now I'm sad. Uh, yep. <laughs> I'll round off with the, my official prediction then is that Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan retain the championships yeah, and then they lose them to the Revival Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like that. I think the same. I, I might not even go with the Elimination Chamber. I think they might even lose them on Raw. But they're going to lose them eventually. Yeah, but, they're not going to yeah, lose here. They'll lose them before us, Yeah. Uh, so we have the handicap match for the WWE Championship. It's AJ Styles against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Owens is going into this injured, so he is probably going to be taken out of the match at some point, maybe just to kind of keep him from really doing too much. And because of the handicap match, if he really did the two of them against Styles, Styles should stand no chance whatsoever. And we know that Shane McMahon is going to be part of this in some fashion. We know that Daniel Bryan, of course, has to be tied into this in some way. I have my fears that this is going to be so overbooked that it's going to be a mess. What gives you that idea? Well, that's what they've been doing with them since uh, Clash of Champions. So I'll admit right now, this is my favorite story in WWE right now. This is one of the only things where it's been like cohesive through the summer with Shane and Kevin, and they keep adding parts to it. But yeah, I don't see AJ losing. However, I don't see okay, Kevin and Sammy fine. losing. So we know we're going to get a lot of tickle butt here. It, it, it got <laughs> really dumb in the 29th <laughs> time when Kevin uh, Owens was supposed to be like a baby face, I think. But he was like, I'm stewing. To anyone struggling with their phone bill, Texas National.